Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how I create questionnaires for use in my uh, research classes in psychology. I've got a way of doing it that I think makes it very uh, clear for uh, research participants. Uh, it's not intimidating, it's easy to answer, it's easy to enter the data. Um, and so here's how it works. First, I put the title at the top, Study on Attitudes About College. Okay, cool. Um, I'd like to take the title. It's a, it's a generic title, but it lets them know that it's, you know, uh, what it's basically about. Center it. I like Arial Black for titles. And make it a little bit larger. The next paragraph is something I do from the Institutional Review Board. It's, it's generally, you know, a couple inches. But this is where I describe dang it, the study and let people know that their participation is voluntary. Uh, if I need to describe the study so we have informed consent, I do that as well. And that their data are anonymous and confidential. Okay, cool. And I'll have several more sentences normally. Um, and by the way, I'm doing this in Microsoft Word, and that's important because a lot of this stuff I only know how to do in Word right now. One of the cool things is if I hit the hyphen thing three times and hit return, it draws a line, which is nice. Now, um, I'm going to do something. Actually, I'm going to take all of this stuff, all of this font, and I'm going to change it from Cambria uh, 12 point to Arial Narrow 11 point. It, it's... Uh, it's a clearer font, and it lets me get more stuff on there uh, with a little more empty space. Please note, I have inch and a quarter margins on the sides. I think this is really important. A lot of people try to push this stuff out to like half inch margins, and it's totally overwhelming. Um, and it's just not polite to do to people. Um, I'll start with some uh, demographics. Um, first, we'd like to ask a few, oops, few questions about you. All right, first one. How old are you? You could just say age. I just think this is a little nicer. Now, instead of putting categories like 18 to 26 or whatever, it is so much better to just put a blank line and let people write in a number that actually gives you better data for analysis. You only use the categories if you have to. Um, and what is your gender? Male. Oops. Sorry about that. Female. And so on. We're all set. That's great. Um, if you want to know whether people are single or dating or something, I like to say instead of marital status, I like to say relationship status because it allows for things like cohabitating, divorce, and, and whatnot. So I put, what is your relationship status? And I put, e.g., single cohabitating, divorced, etc. And then, like the other one, I just do the underscores, give them a blank line, let them write it in. It's really nice. If I do ethnicity, I do the same thing. I just stick an ethnicity thing and let them write in whatever they want, and I code it later. Okay, so there's that. Um, now, let's say I want to ask a bunch of uh, response scale questions where people indicate their level of agreement. Very common in my field. It's a nice way to gather data. Um, the first thing you need to do is I like to put the uh, response scale at the top uh, just once and then let people answer each question following. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to insert a table. Now, you can do a 1 to 5 scale, you can do a 1 to 7 scale. I actually like to use a 0 to 10, which is 11 points, which is really pushing it for most purposes. But I think it works well because I think it's pretty intuitive for people. And so I go like a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then instead of putting a response under each number, I like to put just one at each end. I put not at all. I go to the other side and I say something like extremely or whatever seems most appropriate. All right, um, for the response scale, I like to format it a little differently too. I make the font a tad smaller, sometimes to down to nine point. 
And we got a lot of lines on here. I'd like to get rid of the lines. So I'm going to come up here and get rid of all of them. Then I'm going to put one on the left and one on the right and one in the middle. And then I'm going to center everything. Oops. Uh, it's not doing that because I got the, end, the sides selected also. There we go. I center it. And then because I have these things that are doubled up right there, I'm going to right, I'm going to select two cells, right click and merge cells and make that one flush left. And then uh, this one, I don't need to do it, but I will move it over to add by making it flush right. Okay, it didn't move, but you get the idea. And I could merge cells over here too. Merge cells if it were any longer. That's great. Um, oh, by the way, I should put some instructions here. For the next several questions, please choose a number from 0 to 10 and write it next to each statement to indicate how much you agree with that statement. Okay, that's cool. By the way, a lot of people call this a, a Likert scale. It's not a Likert scale. Likert scale is the, how you choose the questions. This is the response format, and it's just called a response scale. And yeah, so I'm using a 0 to 10 response scale. Now, I want to show you how I set up the questions, and then I'll be done. Um, and I use a very particular way of formatting because I think it makes things really easy. First thing you do is you just write the questions. I like college. Um, I like my classes. I don't get enough sleep because I'm taking too many classes and I have two part-time jobs to help pay for things. And I have three kids and two cats and a dog. Okay, I put that down there so you can see what happens with a really long one. I, obviously this is a bad question, it's compound and nobody's going to agree with that one in particular anyhow. But watch what happens here. First thing, I want to take these questions and I want to space them out a little bit. You don't want things too close, it's overwhelming to people. So I'm going to select the questions and I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to put a little bit of space after each one. Great. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a line in front of each one. Please notice I selected way up here, down to here. And I'm going to go to Find and Replace. And I'm going to look for a paragraph mark. And I'm going to replace it with a paragraph mark, five underscores, and a tab. I hit Replace All. And we don't need to do any more. And check it out. There we go. Now... I select those and I number them, but I push the numbers back over a little bit. I got this big blank space. Here's how I take care of that. I have the ruler open. Do you see this? This indicates, um, you know, this gives the the, uh, the the boundaries for the numbering. But if I do this, if I take this bottom one, if I select the paragraphs, and I take the bottom one, and I click on the triangle part of it, and I move it up to three quarters of an inch, it, nothing appears to happen, but then I stick by just clicking in here, I put a, uh, a tab mark, and look at this, it all lines up now. It's beautiful. If you see the tab things right there, you can see what it looks like. Anyhow, you can put a bunch of questions on there, space them out a little bit, I have big margins, and I think it makes for a very uh, clean, sparse form that does not intimidate people, and it makes entering data exceptionally easy, especially when they're numbered. And I'll show you that in a, uh, another one about actually entering the data into a uh, spreadsheet. But for right now, I hope that helps, and uh, good researching.